It was a come-from-ahead loss for your Minnesota Twins, falling 4-3 to Detroit. It was a split in the series. And now the young and up-and-coming Orioles in Baltimore are next. We'll have all of that for you. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins, your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And joining me as he does at this time, Mr. Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the tweets. Go give him a follow on the road to 1K. What's up? Oh, me, Dave Brown. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Twins fans. Uh Rough day today, but yeah, they're not all going to be uh, come from behind gems. Sometimes they're going to come from behind and get you. <laughs> That's what happened. I uh, I was gonna, I was digging through. I have a small little bin of sports cards on top of my desk here, and I was gonna say no, this Dave Brown, and I had a Dave Brown card set aside for that exact situation, but now I can't find it. Joke ruined. Whatever. Um, thanks so much for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also on YouTube. So hi to the YouTube people. We love you. Please click like and subscribe. We've had some pretty good numbers on those recently. But if you can do that more often, we would also like that as well. Uh, yeah, so be active. Leave us a comment. Leave us a question. Leave us a query. I think a query is a question. But uh, And also, we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. And just so you know, today's show brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. So you can keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, available only to U.S. customers. Dave, twins with a come-from-ahead loss. I only call it that because we like to talk about a come-from-behind victory, which the twins had one of in the first game of the doubleheader on uh, Saturday. But, uh, yeah, it was it, it was not soul-crushing, but definitely disappointing. I think, though, anytime you give up a homer to the present-day version of Javier Baez maybe things aren't going your your way even if it was only 3-1 at that point well th yeah things were going the twins way for the most part until that kind of started things uh I would say if, if we're looking for like a catchy title for today's game it would be bad D in the big D uh the defense on the infield let the twins down uh, a couple times, and also uh, it didn't help either. Austin Martin's, I would say, ill-advised throw home, putting the lead run at third base with less than two outs. It was. We're gonna fight about that too. Good. Uh, it was kind of a gift wrap situation. Yep. The Twins are very polite and they're good guests, and they made a nice, put a bow on it and handed it to him. And here went here, Spencer Torkelson, take it. No, take it. And they did. And uh, it's a split. It should have been three out of four for the Twins. But like you said, there was a game yesterday that could have easily gone the Tigers' way that, that didn't. But, uh, you know, can't gain any ground on them, can't lose any ground on them, just grind it on and uh, bring on the Orioles. Well, and uh, wasn't it eerily reminiscent, that grounder yeah. to Farmer <laughs> of the McKinstry grounder the day before? Now, granted, it didn't result in Kyle Farmer pitching because it just didn't. But – uh Man, I thought I was watching a carbon copy. Like it's like Edouard Julien's home runs so far this season, which have all been like to the same exact spot right. in left field. I felt like that play. It was like the Bizarro cousin. Do you think that ball hawk Zach Hampel is like he's going to start stalking Julien and sitting in whatever seat that is in every ballpark, waiting for his next home run? That's what I would do. Yeah, if I were him. But oh, I you know the uh, the comparison to McKinstry's play yesterday. Uh, I thought the same thing. I, I don't know. Was the play even over yet? And I was thinking that it, would, it was weird how similar it was. And that's why you should not make too much fun of these major leaguers because that karma will come up and bite you like a BY. You know, it's um, – and also that there was a play that Willie Castro didn't make after Baez's home run that sort of started the parade of people on base. And it wasn't an easy play. I think 
Perkins was uh, – there was a, a play that the, the Tigers made later in the game. I think it was Urshela where he was very aggressive on a short hop. And you could almost hear it in Perkins's voice. It's like, yeah, you got to be aggressive on those in-between hops rather than waiting back on it, uh, parentheses, like Farmer did an inning ago. So yeah. uh, Farmer made a boo-boo there. Uh, and Willie Castro was only like an 84, 85 mile an hour hit uh, to him at shortstop that he didn't handle. If the twins have, if the, the twins make the plays that they can and or have their regular guys in those positions, those plays get made and they win the game. So again, their depth has been pretty good to them so far. They've been able, Farmers hasn't had a lot of hits, but he's made some pretty good plays on defense. He's been okay there. Willie's been pretty good on defense too. They didn't make the plays there. And when you don't make the plays, the other team, the Tigers, that's why they call them Tigers. They're going to scratch and claw and come back and beat you. The Motor City Maulers did exactly that. Not exactly a mauling, I guess, but uh, 4-3 final. Twins like fall scratching. to... Yeah, it's it's a lot more dignified and uh, more of an injury than an actual murder. So, uh, yeah. The Twins fall to six and eight, five and four on the road. Tigers nine and six, three and four at Comerica. Up next, the Orioles for the Twins. And I thought, uh, actually, you know what? Let's backtrack for just one second. I, yeah, I was going to make the point, and then you ah, stole it from me. Yeah, if Carlos Correa is out there, that's obviously more of an afterthought of a play that Castro didn't handle. And again, though, yeah, it's uh, everyone's playing with these injuries. Everyone's dealing with something. And the Twins have as much talent as probably anybody else on the injured list. But at the end of the day, you're a big leaguer and got to make the plays in front of you. And there's been a few of those here in the series. And we'll we'll spend time in our next segment arguing or discussing or fighting over what was the worst part of that quote-unquote double. But uh, I wanted to talk about the roster move that was made before the game sending out Jorge Alcala to activate Caleb Thielbar in 2020 hindsight. You'll get people, oh, shouldn't have activated Thielbar. Look what he did. Yeah, fine, whatever. I, I don't want to have that argument. But uh, a lot of people upset that it was Alcala going out. I think, you know, the velo was down on Saturday. Couldn't locate his slider. I know the numbers are good, but he doesn't feel like, you know, there's people saying he's the best reliever so far this season in the bullpen. No chance. No way. I'm taking Brock Stewart and Griffin Jacks over him easily. But uh, to make a long point longer, I just um, I didn't have a problem with the roster move. And people said, well, you don't really need three lefties. Well, you're not going to not activate field bar. You're not going to send out Funderburg, who's pitching well. And don't forget the Orioles. You're going to play the Orioles. They have a lot of left-handed hitters or switch hitters who are better from the left side. Having three lefties in that series could prove very, very beneficial. And, you know, there's a giant void in left field. You really have to hit it. It's even harder to hit a home run at Camden Yards in left field than it is a tight at the Comerica Park. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your, your lefties against right-handed hitters really have to mess up for that to happen. So, yeah, who's the call? If it's not Alcala, what's his, what's his velocity down? I, I hadn't noticed that. And, and yeah, it was like 90, 94, 95, yeah. It was down a bit. And, I mean – the, the question is, is he going to stay healthy? They're using him in multi-inning role. It is kind of a square peg round hole situation, but it's not like you can massage the innings and usage of your sixth reliever. You know, you use him when you need him, and it's on him to stay healthy or on his body to respond. I, and I like what you're saying about, you know, Thunderbird is pitching a – well, I don't know if he's pitching better or not, but he's he's been fine. I like what you said about the uh, the, the upcoming series at Camden Yards, uh, keeping you know those lefties or switch hitters turned around the other way. Um, so it makes sense to to make that move for now. Now, Theobar was off today. He wasn't sharp. Um, he was victimized by bad defense. Yeah. Probably uh, you know even the out that he got uh, looked like a hanger right down the middle. So, I mean, he wasn't, he certainly wasn't on, he'll do better in his next outing. And it, and it wouldn't have looked so bad had the twins not kind of vacated him on defense like they did. So, uh, you know, I, do you have a problem with taking out over 84 pitches? Um, you know what? I, I actually want to discuss that on the other end. So how about we come out of 
right. our first break here, and we'll talk. Um, I'm going to write it down because I'm not good at remembering that. Ober and out. 10 4, good buddy. <laughs> that's what you wrote down? Um, yeah. No, I, I, I literally did because that's how my brain works. Hey, we have a couple of spots here for our friends at eBay Motors and a new one, Monopoly Go. So we'll be right back Look after that. a couple of spots. Passion, drive, and patience are what bring home the winning trophy and also what keep your ride alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, whether it's superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. So keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Restrictions apply. But eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit is available only to U.S. customers. Now, Dave, I've been told I'm a competitive person. Do you do you find that to be true, do you think? Um, I, I believe it. I uh, I wouldn't say overly competitive. So when you say I've been told I'm a competitive person, what what that means in my head is overly competitive. And I don't think you're overly competitive, you know, in a Michael Jordan, Shohei Otani's uh, translator kind of uh, gambling sort of way. So maybe, um, maybe overly low with a B, overly. Is that the transition we're doing? No. No, actually, the guy I used to sit next to in the press box, his last name was Oberly. That's a that's a transition. Okay. Well, so yeah, I do have a competitive side. I think we all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've oh, heard of it. It's, right. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards and crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you big money. Hundreds. But yeah, right. The best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like the classic Monopoly, but I can also now rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. Maybe just a big target on your back. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, Dave, we are going to talk about this seventh inning. Um, Bailey Ober goes out for the seventh, faces Spencer Torkelson, 10-pitch double. I don't know if I'd call it a ringing double, but yeah. Yeah, it was. Hit it off the fence. It, yeah. It ringed I, enough. Yeah. So I would say, you know, it was a, uh, not a booming double, not a, maybe not, but it was well struck. Struck. <laughs> not cheap person. Brain. Come on. Uh, so anyhow, um, Rocco goes out and he, he signals, and I see him signal the righty, and I was watching but not listening, so I didn't know who for sure was warming up. And uh, boy, watching, not listening, thats my wife would probably attest to that. Um, but he brought out Brock Stewart for Kerry Carpenter, and I thought, well, what about Caleb Thielbar here? Hmm. And Thank you for reminding me, yes. Yeah couple different things I thought. One, you might get Kerry Carpenter out of the game, which in the seventh inning, eh, you know, pinch hitter. It's like Kyle Farmer for Ed Julien. Uh, you don't like it, but in the moment, it's, it gives you the platoon advantage. But if this comes back around in the ninth, which uh, we didn't end up having a ninth, you've got Carpenter out of the game for a different hitter who's going to face, you know, whoever's closing for you in that moment, um, most likely Jax, who ended up pitching anyway. I with that, even, oh, sorry. I thought well, no, so with that said, field, bar, field bar not coming in. I thought, you know what? He hasn't pitched since spring training. They maybe wanted to ease him into a, a little bit easier of a situation, you know, starting an inning. And uh, that's what they did. Stewart did fine. All things considered, got a nice nifty one, four, three double play to close it out. But I almost wondered if field bar going there would have been a good move. And then Stewart for the eighth. This is not a second guess, just a, eh, who knows? I think uh, I, I did not think about this in, in context of the seventh inning, but I did in the eighth looking at who Theo Barr was facing. And uh, he's 
not necessarily. I mean, the whole one out lefty thing, that's an ancient history in Major League Baseball anyway. Yeah. Um, but I thought, you know, these aren't the best guys for him to be facing. Uh, Veerling as a, as a pinch hitter and Baez especially, and then Carson Kelly, you know, green kind of. So um, I, and now looking at it in the context of the seventh inning, I think maybe it would have made, I, I totally get where I imagine Rocco's coming from. Like you said, not wanting to put after a, a person that is on base, you wanted to have Theo Bar start cleanly, but just in terms of matchups, Mm -hmm. I think a, a reversal would have made a little more sense there. Now the whole, uh, it doesn't sound like you're necessarily uh, out on Ober, uh, no. going out of the, you're, you're on board with that. And I am too, I think for two reasons, one, you know, 84 pitches, whatever, but that was a tough, I think it was a lot. I think it was 10 pitches. The at bat to Torkelson that ended up was on the 10th one. Yep. Yes. It was a tough, uh, you know, the, there was some, effort exuded there. And I think it was probably a good place uh, to, to let him, to, to get him out of the game and, and let the bullpen take over. So, um, you know, if it had been sixth, I, I think maybe it would have been a little quick, but it, it was, yeah. it was, it was good enough. And they got out of that inning anyway, like you mentioned with the, the, the nifty double play that, that, uh, um, Stewart initiated, that Stewart initiated one, four, three, so I don't see those very often. No, they're very pretty. You know, yeah. one, four, three, one, six, three, very pretty back to the mound. And, and then a nice turn by Julian, who's continuing to play really good defense. At least uh, the eye test says so at second base. So, um, yeah, he speared yeah. a pretty good liner too. He had a big jump, big jump on that. So, um, but then, uh, you know, if you want to, so I think we agree basically on this, but then, yeah. you know, what do you what do you think was the, the biggest misplay of that eighth inning? Well, I know we went. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but we uh, we did go back and forth. For me, the farmer misplay is just slightly worse than the throw from Martin. And again, like he got a double. They called it a double for Canna. Whatever home cooking. To me, it was just because if Farmer comes up with it. Uh, the runs don't score or, you know, it's, it's a, it's a different situation there, but that throw, that is a very rookie mistake. That very. is a very, I've only played the outfield for a while, but also just the game speeds up on you in the big leagues. He's looked the part for the most part, but that's the small things. It's like Torkelson throwing to third to try get Buxton out on mm. the bunt Vasquez had yesterday. And, and Theodore Tollefson brought it up in the post cast. And I thought that was a great, great, great uh, observation by him is, and I added, you know, Corkelson is a right-handed first baseman has to get the ball turn and throw. You have to know who's running there, not only to third or not, not only to first with Vasquez, who's Glacier's pace, but Buxton to third. It would have been nice to get that out. And I understand that, but you have to greedy. get it. Yeah. So that, yeah. that was a, so he's he's got a little more experience than Martin, and they're both better players for learning that lesson. But uh, I just very narrowly give it to Farmer. But you're right in your in your argument about it, it wasn't as easy of a play as it may have looked. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a harder play. It was a more uh, it was a I don't know a forgive more forgivable the the, the, yep. the thing that Martin did in throwing to the wrong base. You know, even though he is new to the outfield. I feel like that was preventable, a preventable mistake, something that might have changed the dynamic of the inning and how maybe the twins get out of it there uh, mm -hmm. less scathed than they did. So, but uh, as Perkins said in the broadcast, the mistake with farmer was not being aggressive enough mm -hmm. on the short hop and charging in a little bit. If he does, he probably makes that play because he, he has before and he's, a pretty deft fielder. So he's yeah. definitely capable of, of making those plays, but that too. And, and uh, it looked harder than it was, I feel, but I, the play with Castro really started things off. It's, it's, we don't want to, I don't want to underrate that one for how bad that's kind of where the bad stuff started with all the base runners. And that's a play that I think Correa makes and um, maybe he makes it and a lot of shortstops don't and Willie didn't. On that play. Yeah, and then the throw from left, 
from Martin. Yeah, it, it that's again, it's a rookie out there. If if Walner's out there, you know, he's still rookie-ish. So who knows? Kirilov, same thing. You know, Kepler and Wright, he doesn't make that throw, but apples and oranges. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think it's just the the slight growing pains you will have with guys playing not out of position so much, but being pressed into action in uh, less than ideal circumstances. Let's take a quick second and read a, a word from Yahoo Finance, and then we'll come down the stretch. We will debate anything left unsaid about this game and then prepare you for an Orioles series where the Twins are going to miss Corbin Burns. And I I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say I've been missing it, Bob. It's, uh, it's a good thing for the Twins. But first, a word. Today's show would not be possible if it weren't for sponsors like Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? Well, you can with Yahoo Finance. You can consolidate your views from multiple accounts in one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. You want your portfolio to grow to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt, or view your mortgage? You can do pretty much anything standing in the way of you uh, with financial of your way in your way of financial freedom. Easy for me to say. Uh, with Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools you need in order to help reach your financial freedom. So for more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, and customizable charts, as well as more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. It's the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right, Dave, we're coming down the home stretch here. And I um, I think you also made a good point about that where Canna scooted into third base where it was one out too. So like, that extra base with one out is a big deal from the standpoint of squeeze, sack fly. I mean, it opens up a wild pitch, that sort of thing. Yes, the kind of pitches you can you feel comfortable throwing. Especially where with you're Jack's having, in the dirt, maybe. The Jack's having a sweeper, which could be hard to corral from yeah. in the dirt. So I think I think that point is well taken because uh one out, runner on second, you are kind of in that weird no man's land where you're obviously not gonna bunt. You don't really know for sure how much you can push a guy second to home. And um, Torkelson, if I'm not mistaken, dunked a single into right and Canna basically walked home. Um, you know, maybe maybe it's a little closer. I don't know. Maybe not at all. Maybe it doesn't matter. But you pitch the situation differently. You pitch. Everything changes. It's it's a – what is that called? Is that like a butterfly effect where things change? Yeah, right. And, and it's like the, the future is completely uh, irreverently – and that's almost the word uh, different than it would have been otherwise. So, yeah. you know, you can't. And sort of on that note, e you know, even though all these things happened and the twins lost the game, there was one other thing that kind of made me go, hmm, sort of like a dog. What are you saying, Fred? Um, when they walked, uh, when AJ Hinch walked Walner in the last inning after. They clarified that. Yeah. There was a pitch clock violation that did not get reported. And so, yeah, it almost felt like a Tony La Russa situation where uh, – No, that you... wasn't the, the – the Tigers doing that. That was uh, – the manager doing no. that. It was a free no. ball. It was a free ball. So, no, what had happened was there was a pitch violation to start the clock count. Uh -huh. So the ball, what we thought was ball free, three was ball four, Walner Walk. So it wasn't a, a managerial decision. It was a mistake – on the part of um, uh, the J La uh, who's closing for them again? I Jason keep saying Foley. Like, J uh, Jason Foley. Sorry, the Ahmed the Foley. Ahmed Foley, <laughs> my friend Foley. Oh, geez, hard, hard throwing righty with uh, nasty stuff. Who was uh, who's dicing it up pretty good? But yeah, no, no command there. But yeah, so it was actually a uh, pitch violation that gave the first ball. So I, I don't know. When if did they Foley clarify that on the broadcast? 
afterwards. Uh, oh. Corey did after they came back from break after the final out. So they didn't clarify that. I, I was wondering too, because yeah, it felt like, Hey, did you Google Matt Walner and the plate appearances <laughs> he's been taken lately? Because whoo -wee. Um, well, yeah. anyway, I thought, well, Hey, they're letting them back in the game. And that would have been very weird if the Tigers had lost be or you know, the they score even been tied because yeah. of a decision that was well, done. So more or less, I take weird. it all back, AJ, you're, you're good. Bye. Well, more or less weird than McKinstry going into pitch with the team down four. Cause you said that was weird too. I think it was, I, I think that no. was uh, questionable. Uh, there's some kind of pitch violation with that too. Uh, Tony yeah. Lewis is rolling over uh, Astuda's uh, grave or something like that. Not yeah. him, not him, the other guy. Who was the White Sox player who's like, uh, who had that moment last year or two, year, two years ago or whatever um, it was when, when, uh, not Astudio, but the White Sox version of Astudio. Your mean Mercedes. Your mean Mercedes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just I thought you were going with that. Steve Lyons there for a second. No, I would not go with Steve Lyons. Pulling your pants down at first base? No, I would not do that. No. I mean, it might happen. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it on purpose. But no. yeah, that was questionable. I'm still questioning you, AJ, for that, but not for walking Matt Walner, which is not what you did, as it turns out. Hey, I had to put some groceries away or chop down a tree or something. I, I missed that explanation. Sorry. Uh, you're the you're the modern day Jim Tomey. It was I was feeling like Jim Tomey in the backyard. I'm like I gotta get you know this is a, this is a rough loss for the Twins. I gotta make my, myself feel like Jim Tomey. I think I'm gonna cut some branches, some limbs off a tree. And you, I you see that commercial. You see that what? commercial of him as Paul Bunyan back from like 2010 or 11. I I I have seen it. Yeah. I don't remember I it clearly or detailed, but I I. That's how I think of him anyway. So Yeah, great, great bit. Uh, Orioles coming up have not been at the top of their game. They're still dangerous. And, again, no burns, no burnt ends on this one. You'll get Varland and Irvin, Paddock and Rodriguez, Lopez and Wells, Tyler Wells, former Twins prospect, who, if I'm not mistaken, was rule five away from them. Um, fairly, so again, Fairly favorable pitching matchup. Certainly not having to deal with burns is favorable. Getting Lopez back, uh, not that he went anywhere, but having him pitch in the series is good. Uh, the first game is not too out of sorts either. So, right. uh, but they kind of, I'd like to see Louis Varland uh, put a more of a complete effort together. He's had some good individual innings, but he's been burned by the three run homer one or three too many times. Yeah, right on right, he'll be just fine because of how that field plays, but right on left is. It's going to be tricky. He's going to he's going to have to figure some things out. And I mean, that's what's that's what's keeping him from being a number five starter and a number, you know, three, three point five ish. And that's a fairly decent leap, because if he can keep the ball in the yard, a lot of opportunities open up for him. So we'll see what happens there. Grayson Rodriguez throws the crap out of the ball, but so does Chris Paddock. I'm excited for that one. And then, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens, obviously. The offense, none of this will matter if the offense does what the offense has done far too often so far this season. And there's not a lot of reason to be optimistic because there's not a lot of reinforcements coming soon. Maybe Trevor Larnick in the short-ish term. He's having a rehab stint down in Fort Myers that uh, at least started off well. I don't know if he's an option or if he's going to go straight to St. Paul. We'll see what happens there. Um same thing with Josh Stalmont. There was uh, Theodore Tollefson when he was on the postcast said he thinks Stalmont might be activated and optioned just to get him a, a bit of a ramp up to really getting big league ready. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm eager though to see the Twins against these Orioles because um, I don't know. It's a it's going to be a fun Orioles team to watch from afar. I'm just glad the Twins don't have to play them a whole bunch of times this year. Yeah, Jackson Holiday has had uh, he got his first major league hit Sunday, so I believe. Um, yeah. And he had been struggling mightily. I mean, we think Matt Walder strikes out too much, but uh, he had lots of strikeouts and very few plate appearances so far. But he's obviously uh, just going to get him get his feet wet a little bit. And he's just 20 years old, just a bay bay. Yeah. But um, so it, it'll be fun to see these guys. They have fun players up and down the lineup. Uh, they all kind of look alike, too, which is weird. But uh, Colton Kowser in center field uh, has been hitting well and they move yes. for him. 
which I think is a fun thing. I think people in Minnesota can appreciate that. When he comes to bat, you'll hear, ooh, for a Colton Kowser, but that's because his name's Kowser, and the people are going, moo. So it's not that they don't like him or they're booing somebody else. It's uh, kind of a fun thing that the Orioles fans have uh, started doing. So uh, a nice little uh, – there's, there's always something in these games that uh, – uh, like the, the Tigers had that pizza stick. You know, the, the Orioles have their own business that they do. It's uh, fun to watch the differences between the teams when everybody gets creative, just as long as the Twins win. Yeah, the Tigers were playing still D-R-E after every strikeout. I found that kind of curious. Um, I, I guess I associate Dr. Dre with California more than, than I swear, we've had, haven't I seen this conversation on Twitter about how he's not from Detroit, but he's from California, and he says so in his songs all the time? Did so, he Compton? Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, uh, that's California. That's not right. – I've been to Detroit, and it's actually an underrated town, yep. a place that I would go uh, – to the downtown at night, get a haircut, have a drink, whatever, whatever you need to do. Like downtown Minneapolis, it's a, it gets a bad rap. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a fun place to visit. Uh, go there. I would say why you can do a, do a road trip to Comerica. See Detroit. Well, we're, we're going to give away this last minute over and out. Good buddy. I am losing my voice. Uh, hopefully not losing my mind, but we will be back with another edition of locked on twins. Hard to say. Uh, East Coast time zone, they'll be playing a little earlier, so maybe we can be at our normal time or even earlier. But for Dave Brown, this is Brandon Warren signing off, saying thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow night.